Okay, 16.3, coastal erosion and de deposition. Exciting because we're tearing down and we're building up. And so uh, our objectives in this section are going to explain how changes in sea level um, uh, are relative to the land and the coastline and how they affect coastlines. Uh, and then we're going to describe features of a barrier island, compare the different types of coral reefs, uh, and there are a couple of different types that are really, really cool. And then analyze the effects on human activity. And so uh, uh, what human activity has done to change um, the way our coastal lands are. And so uh, very exciting, uh, cool, cool section. So let's go. Um, so first things is most of the processes and changes that take place um, on, on the coast uh, are because of the change in the sea level in relationship to the land. And so, um, you know, in the last ice age, we saw uh, somewhere around 100 and, um, 145 or 150 meters uh, that uh, the water has increased because the snow and ice have melted. And so where our sea level is today it was about mm, a football field and a half down lower uh, and so there's obviously uh, changes in the coastline as a result of that and you know if if uh, um, Antarctica and Greenland melt um, we're gonna see an even higher level and so uh, about uh, 60 meters or, or uh, 65 yards uh, you would see uh, that increase. And so if we think about where uh, our cities are and our coastal cities, and, and more importantly, um, I believe the, the seven largest cities uh, in the world, all are coastal cities. Obviously, we would see incredible flooding take place and, and displacement. People would have to go somewhere. So the reality is, is land sinks, land rises, and uh, coastlines change. And is it due to glacial ice? In some areas it is. And so if we think about Hudson Bay, you know, that's all changed in there as the ice has begun to melt. Um, and so we do see some areas change as a result of plate tectonics. And so um, um, we see subduction and, and uh, um, we look at California and that that whole ring of fire going up the the west coast, uh, and, and we see uh, all these different areas in the United States where these plate boundaries are, and so we see changes in our in our land as a result of that, um, and, and so pretty cool. So a submergent coastline, a submergent coastline is basically when our coastline sinks a little bit or or basically sea level comes up and so um, what we see is we see these areas um, become submerged and, and so uh, pretty straightforward what a submergent coastline is and we see little inlets and bays and headlands and uh, um, you know uh, all those types of formations um, becoming more pronounced is because of that. So the next type that we're going to talk about is an estuary. And I love estuaries because really estuaries are the, I want to say the, 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 the liver and the lung of, of, of the earth, really the liver and the kidneys of the earth, I guess. And basically what happens is um, water is flowing in there and all the nutrients and silts and stuff like that. Well, they're being filtered out by by all of the organisms that are in there. And so a typical or, uh, estuary uh, would look something like this, where it would flood and it would waters would recede and it would flood and recede and flood and recede. And so basically that water is getting filtered through um, these plants and these organisms and these little filter feeders. Um, a fjord, uh, we talked about fjords. Uh, um, basically these these narrow bays formed as a result of uh, as a result of glaciation and the glaciers going through um, and so when we look at uh, fjord um, it's it's exactly what we think we have this giant u-shaped valley from a glacier but it's these inlets um, that are here as a result of the water and the the submergent coastline so the water is now filled into here just a beautiful beautiful picture uh emergent coastlines and in other words are coming out 
right? So land rises or the sea falls. And so we see a lot of things like this form. And so like sea cliffs, right? Sea cliffs and things like that. Well, um, the West Coast of the United States definitely is an emergent coastline because we have subduction taking place underneath that. Um, Florida, Florida is really a gentle slope, right? So it's, it's all sugar sand predominantly. Um, there's beaches and bays and just a smooth coastal plain. So it's very slow, but it is a, an emergent coastline. A barrier island, barrier islands are these long, narrow, offshore, these ridges of sand. Um, I think it's better just to show you one. So here's a barrier island, and what it's awesome. Now that there's man-made barrier islands, and there's, there's natural barrier islands, but what's happened here is this sand has created a berm, and this berm is protecting all this land back here. Um, this is called a barrier to this area. A lot of times you'll see roads built on top of barrier islands. Sometimes you see houses on barrier islands, but they're the first ones to get it if the case of a hurricane. Um, so lagoon, a lagoon is really beautiful. They're very cool. And basically what happens is you have this area of shallow water that can be cut off either at low tide or being able to be opened up at high tide. And so often you see barrier islands around the outside of lagoons. And when I think of a lagoon, I think of this. So when the tide rises, water can flow in and out. When the tide falls, water can't get in there. And everything that's in there is trapped in there. This is a lagoon. And you have this little barrier island out here forming. Pretty cool. Tidal flats are so awesome because what are they? They're this area where all of these little creepy crawlies all live. They're, they're filter feeders. They're feeding on, on uh, material that's in there. Basically, water goes out. It's, it's semi-dry. I say semi-dry. There's still water there. Um, uh, water comes in. It gets flooded again. So these organisms, these plants and animals that live here, they have to be able to support themselves, whether it's whether there's submerged or not submerged. And so, um, really interesting how the ecosystem works because organisms have little niches and and living at different parts of the time while they're in there. A coral reef. Um, basically, we're talking about millions and millions of uh, of organisms, corals, little animals um, that produce this calcium carbonate shell. And uh, they live in colonies. And um, a coral reef is the base is, is the millions of coral skeletons that were there before. And they're very solid and hard. And so what we see is, is what we think of as coral reefs, just like, you know, in... in uh, this type of a picture, right? Teeming with life. This is a very healthy coral reef. Underneath this is thousands and thousands of tons of, of dead uh, coral skeletons that this is all living on top of. Um, a fringing reef uh, is is a basically an, air, an island of a reef around it. And so when we look at this here, here's this fringing reef. It's on the outside of this island. And it's just sitting there, fringing reef. Um, a barrier reef, like the Great Barrier Reef, right? And we see this as basically part of a submerged volcanic island. Um, and what we see is this, this barrier reef protecting an area. So if we think about a barrier reef, here's this reef. Uh, and here's a reef here. And there's this channel going through here. But this is a barrier reef. It's protecting an area. And then atoll. An atoll basically is this shallow lagoon, nearly circular, of a coral reef. Um, it's so cool looking when you see it. Wow. You know, and basically um, this, this could flood and water could move back and forth, or sometimes it doesn't. But it's this circular look, this atoll. Um, so what are we doing? Well, we've got to figure out ways to preserve our coastline. We are... Uh, beating it up. We are beating up our, our estuaries. We are beating up our coral reefs. And uh, unfortunately, as our population increases, so does um, the use of our coastlines. Um, if you think about it, pollution has already destroyed a tenth of our shellfish 
producing waters. And with more and more people um, there, it's only going to go down if we don't protect it. So we have to work to preserve our coasts. Um, that's going to take joint efforts between private agencies and governmental agencies. Um, do I think it can work? Absolutely. Do I think everybody um, has the desire to do it? I think they're going to have to find the desire to do it um, uh, because I think um, ultimately if they don't, um, we're going to have uh, a problem because our, our food production and our ecosystems are going to be uh, start to be deteriorated to a point of no return. Um, I want to show you this video clip. I really like this. Uh, Jean-Michel Cousteau, uh, really an excellent, uh, uh, excellent marine biologist. His grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, uh, discovered scuba, um, and he talks a little bit about coral reefs, the ocean. From above, a simple blanket of water, but below, a complex world full of color, life, and wonder. This is the coral reef, a timeless thing of beauty for all to enjoy. And yet, mankind's actions have destroyed over one quarter of the world's reefs. Please join me as we explore the fragile beauty of nature's underwater world. I will be your guide and your host. I'm Jean-Michel Cousteau. <laughs> growing only a few centimeters a year, has taken millions of years to build the limestone skeleton of the reef. And though located in nutrient-poor waters, the coral has learned to thrive. But it hasn't done it alone. It has, it, it has developed an amazing relationship with algae, a tiny plant that lives inside the coral's body. This connection is delicate. <clears throat> This connection is delicate, and the introduction of additional nutrients can upset this balance, leaving the reef at risk. <clears throat> Little fish, I'm trying to make a documentary film. A film? A film? I've always wanted to be in a film. I was just explaining the delicate balance between coral and the algae living within its body. <laughs> algae living inside the coral's body. Come on, that's creepy. No, it isn't. <laughs> yes, it is. Isn't. Is. Isn't. Is. Isn't. isn't. Whatever. No. It is not the whatever, it's true. How do you know? Are you a coral? I'm Jean-Michel Cousteau. And I've studied the ocean all my life. Well, I'm Dory, and I practically live in the ocean. Good for you, but now I must continue to make my film. So long, Dory. Hey! Anemones also share a delicate connection with their inhabitants, the clownfish. Clownfish? Did somebody say clownfish? What now? Carlin, burrito, this is... Uh, sorry, what was your name again? I'm Jean-Michel Cousteau. Arrêtez la musique! I was trying to talk about anemones. That's perfect, because this here is Mr. Anemone. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, Dad, you know everything about anemone. Come on. Well, all right. Anemones are really like snails, except... No, no, snails is not... No. Oh, they're like a bed of stinging hair. Yes, a large bed of... No. Oh, imagine if spaghetti could talk. That's enough! If we remain silent, we may see the chameleon of the reef. The amazing cuttlefish. Did you want to see him change color? I, I, I can help. I can speak cuttlefish. She's good feet. Can you please change color for us? No. I... There's Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Frederico. Myron, my man, Myron. Bermuda, hey, Enid, Yolanda, tell us, Gary, hey, Gary. Sassifi, I'm trying to make a film here. Even the lovely Spanish dancer depends Did on. Did someone the... say dancing? Ah, ah, ooh, 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 ooh. Clear the ring. <laughs> Papa's back in town. <laughs> Stop. Let me talk. The ocean where you live evaporates to form clouds. The clouds produce snow. The snow melts. Feeding rivers, irrigation, drinking water, then down drains through sewers, all back to the sea. Everyone, everywhere, affects the ocean. Wow, amazing. Finally, you're listening. Yeah, I can hear the ocean. Arrêtez maintenant, je ne peux pas travailler comme ça. Mr. 
Mr. Cousteau? Jean Michel? Are you there? Where'd he go? I'm back, and I am fine. Can we get you something? Do you want a glass of water? Dad, why is that coral white? Well, you know when you get sick, you, you turn a little pale? Well, that's what coral does. It, it turns white. What happened to it? Well, as more humans use more energy, it creates more pollution. The resulting global warming increases the temperature of the ocean. When this happens, the coral cannot survive. Will it be okay? Well, Nemo, it won't be easy. People must learn to live in better balance with nature. Conserving energy, recycling, reducing pollution. But if we do all this, the ocean's temperature may lower, allowing the coral to flourish. In fact, tonight is the one magic night of the year when healthy corals we produce. There, it is happening. Ooh, oh. Ooh look at that. Whoa. Whoa. Amazing. <laughs> look at this. Happy birthday, coral. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Incredibly, the corals release their eggs in a single night so that even the hungriest fish cannot eat them all. What's it doing? Then you're a little older, son. As mankind's actions continue to damage and threaten the reef, we must take responsibility and change our behavior to protect and preserve it. For we are as connected to the planet as the corals are to the algae living within them. And just as we Algae did... living inside coral? That's creepy! No, it is not! Yeah, it is! It isn't! It is. isn't! It is. No, it's normal. See, they work together. That's... Algae are plants that make food for the coral, and corals fertilize the algae. But when there's pollution, the coral can't get enough food from the algae. Look! Wow! I'm... You guys know a lot about the reef! Well, it's not hard. You just have to pay attention and listen. Then why won't you listen to me? Oh, hi! Who are you? I am Jean-Michel Cousteau! <laughs> Upstaged by fish. This would have never happened to Papa. Goodbye. I am Jean-Michel Cousteau. Keep exploring. Awesome. Well, you guys did a great job. Thanks for uh, paying attention. I appreciate everything, and I hope you have a great day. You need to get started working on 16.3 from the worksheet and your book. Have a great day, you guys.